here's 10 books that will instill the mindset in you to make you a millionaire. All of these are well worth the read. And out of the collection of books that you see behind me, these are the best ones. It doesn't matter if you read them, if you listen to them on audiobook, or even if you have Kindle read them to you, what matters is you're able to apply the lessons from them. Book number one is Atomic Habits. I can't recommend this book enough. It gets to the core of why we do what we do and how to program yourself to do the things that you know you need to do automatically. The way that you do that is by controlling the habits that you build. You shouldn't have to consciously make the choices to repeatedly do the important things every single time. Because once you build a habit, it becomes second nature and anyone can build habits. Book number two and three are lumped together because I can sum them up with the same message, buy and read them both. The One Thing and Essentialism are two of the best books that I've ever read, and they're super applicable to today's busy, noisy world. Basically, they talk about doing what's actually important every day. A lot of people make to-do lists, but when you get down to the root of it, most of the things on your list probably aren't actually moving your boat forward. And often, I'm guilty of this too, we can even put things on our to-do list that kind of distract us from the important things that we know we need to get done, all in the name of doing more even if we're not consciously aware of it. The reality is all tasks are not created equal and you're better off getting one or two important things every single day done than a bunch of unimportant ones. A major life hack that I picked up from these books was that sometimes less is more. And that doesn't mean doing less just for the sake of doing less. It means choosing less things to do, but the ones that you do choose are the ones that really matter. Book number four is maybe my favorite book ever and it's called Relentless. Relentless was written by Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant's trainer, Tim Grover. Now there's definitely some cool psychological tips in here that will help you get more out of yourself and some cool stories about each one of them as well. But the biggest thing that I picked up from this book was the permission to be decisive. I read this book initially a few years ago during a period of my life where I was mentally weak, a little bit lost, and a shell of what I knew I could be. And it gave me the permission to be more decisive and move forward. Often we think that we need other people's permission for lots of the things that we do, but we don't. You already know what you need to do and you already know what it is that you want. Make your own decisions, be decisive, be a leader. People will respect you for being that way and you'll become a lot more successful just by implementing this. Because speed can be a superpower, especially in business. Book number five is Blue Ocean Strategy. This book gets you thinking outside the box and really opens your eyes to not always following the masses of people. It's extremely valuable in today's world because we're bombarded with the same business models over and over again and the same exact strategies. But those are often oversaturated and extremely competitive. There's sometimes wisdom in replicating what's working for other people, but if you really want to strike it big, you'll also want to be thinking about potential blue oceans where there's next to no competition yet. Book number six is The Slight Edge. I read this book recently after hearing Jordan Welch say it was the book that he attributed his success most to. And it didn't disappoint. The message in this book is extremely similar to the message in book number seven, which is the compound effect. Both of them talk about building momentum and how that's so powerful. But it's also difficult for most people to do consistently because we can't reap the fruits of our labor while we're planting the seeds. To briefly sum up the slight edge, doing the little things that you know you need to do every single day won't necessarily make you a millionaire superhero to Tomorrow. But if you do them consistently every day, it'll be the slight edge that you need to get over your competition. And before you know it, that edge won't be so slight anymore, but it all starts with consistency and doing the little things. To sum up the compound effect, we can look at this compound curve. Now, this is true in everything you do from business to fitness to relationships, whatever. Again, consistency over time here trumps all. As you put in work consistently, you'll build compound momentum. You won't necessarily know notice it right away or even for a little while, but eventually your wins will compound and you'll become that overnight success that everyone talks about. Book number eight is super underrated and I rarely hear it on these types of videos and it's one that you could read in an hour, but it's got lots of valuable lessons in it. I think this little book by Grant Cardone called The Millionaire Booklet is literally his best book ever. The other ones are good too, don't get me wrong, but this one has some really applicable lessons for everybody that they can apply financially. The best lesson that I took from this book was the 
ability to stay broke. Basically what that means is whenever you have excess money, either put it to work for you immediately, like invest it, for example, or put it into an account so you don't have easy access to it and you can just forget about it. There's two premises at work here. First, seeing less in your bank account will keep you more hungry and it'll keep you working hard because it's easy to get complacent when you see your bank balance going up and up or it's high based on your perception of high. And secondly, your lifestyle will often inflate to match the money that you believe you have. That's why lifestyle creep and keeping up with the Joneses is so real. Now, you obviously want to make sure that you have enough to cover your expenses first, but after that, you want to be vigilant about either saving or investing almost all the rest. And it's funny, when I started doing this, it really didn't feel like much changed in hindsight. I just spent less money on stupid stuff and I didn't waste money on flashy things that I didn't need. All that actually happened was my bank balance and my investment portfolio started going up and up and up much faster and it kept me hungry to produce more. Now I've also gamified my spending too, which you don't have to do, but essentially it works like this. So let's say I wanna buy a new driver for golf and that driver is $400. Well, it's really not $400 because the opportunity cost of what I could turn that $400 into if I didn't buy the driver and I just invested it might be $10,000 over the next decade or two. So when you think about it like that, you'll realize just how expensive the stupid things that you're wasting your money on can be. And this applies to almost everything. So now I literally play a game with myself and every time I want something, but I know I really don't need it. I just invest whatever I was going to spend on it anyway, because I wouldn't have that money in my bank account Anyway, I dare you to try this. You'll be surprised just how much you can accumulate a lot faster than you think. And you'll be surprised at just how many things that you don't need when you really think about it. Book number nine is the 80-20 principle. Now, if you haven't read this book, you need to. It's a simple concept that anyone can implement into anything. Business, life, fitness, relationships, you name it. It covers how the things you do don't all have equal outputs. 80% of the things that you do only produce 20% of the results and vice versa. 20% of the things that you do produce 80% of the results. So that means that you can literally do a fifth of the work that you're doing now and still get 80% of the results that you've got. But let's take it a step further. What if you double down on that 20% that actually matters too? Not only would you save time, but you get a lot more done and be a lot more successful at whatever you applied this to. If you don't believe it, read the book. It gives countless examples over and over again. And you'll also realize just how much this applies to everything that you're doing. Finally, principle Principles by Ray Dalio is a masterclass in a lot of things. Now, this book is long and it's honestly not a very fun read. Some points and some chapters even are monotonous and boring, but then you'll stumble upon a gem and it'll all be worth it. There's so many valuable tidbits of insight in this book. I highly recommend that you at least look into it. Either try to read a few pages a day and highlight anything that sticks out to you. You can get it done pretty quickly that way, or just try to get a summary of the main key important points. But there are loads of tips that can help Help you make more money from one of the most successful investors and wealthiest people in history. So there you have it. 10 books that will make you a millionaire. If you read nothing else but these books this year, I guarantee that you will get better and you will get more results and make more money than you are right now.